The biggest mistake I made in my business was not hiring a professional to help me with my money. Not just my taxes, but the actual plan I had for my business. I was completely lost on how to handle taxes, what to do with profit, and how to maintain my income. I had to find a better way. That's when I found Core Financial. Core Financial is a team of tax professionals that actually care about building real relationships with their clients. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all of my tax benefits. Are you struggling with your finances? Look no further. Core Financial is a brand that is nationwide that can help you with your business. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core and they can help you too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com core to schedule a consultation today. Core Financial, real relationships, no surprises. It seems like there are new cameras and equipment coming out all the time. It gets incredibly confusing and the FOMO is real. Nick and I have been preaching for years that the best way to try out new gear is to rent before you buy. And there is only one place we recommend when it comes to renting, and that is our friends over at Lens Rentals. Lens Rentals is the premier source for renting not only camera equipment, but lenses, drones, projectors, and more. Have a big project coming up and you need to really wow your couple? Wanting to test out the newest camera before you drop thousands on it? You need lens rentals. My favorite thing is that if I love something I rent, I can keep it. They apply a portion of the rental fee to the purchase price and with a few simple clicks, that gear is mine. Check out the latest promo codes and promotions at howtofilmweddings.com slash lens rentals. Lens rentals, the only place we recommend renting. So, Nick. Yes. I just think I want to start talking. I don't okay, know if start, I want to do. Start, Here we are. Start, We're talking. This start is the talking. start of the episode. I'm, I'm I'm out on intros for for a little bit. Here we are, though, Nick. We have Catherine back on our podcast from Blink Films. Um, long story short, she posted a video that kind of just blew us away and took the wedding video industry a little bit by storm last week. And so we wanted to have her on and just talk to her about this film. Talk to her about what it's done for her, her business, just that story. But first, hi, Catherine, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you guys? It's it's fun to be back here again, not not too long after the last episode. So thank you for having me as always. Well, when you make films like that, we have to kind of <laughs> say, okay, we'll keep bringing you back. No, it's the it, like everybody that we've talked to, we've shared the video in the Facebook group, like all the kinds of stuff. It's just like this video um, was super awesome and it was a lot, but I'd love for you to kind of, for people that haven't, um, you know, watch the video, um, maybe explain a little bit of what it was and then maybe we'll even cut to a, a small clip of it. Absolutely. So this film, it's, it's a bit different than my others. It's, incredibly emotional. Um, the couple is Macy and Blake and Macy unfortunately lost her mom to breast cancer um, two weeks before she was supposed to walk down the aisle. And that obviously completely changed what their day looked like, looked like and how they experienced their wedding day and how their immediate families experienced their wedding day. And so this film is it's my longest one to date. It's 17 minutes long, and it feels like so much more than a wedding film. Um, it's just, it's a story of love and loss and their unbreakable faith. And I feel like it's just, it's one of those life films that is more of an heirloom and just a reminder to anyone who watches it, you know, <clears throat> just that solid life reminder of hugging the people that you love extra tight. It's, it's definitely a tearjerker for sure. Mm -hmm. And we had asked you beforehand if it was okay, but we're going to kind of like a TV show almost like tee up a clip, uh, a preview clip of this. It's like a four or five minute clip. And if you're listening on uh, audio, you'll still be able to hear it, which will be great, but you might check out the YouTube channel just for this, just so you can kind of see it, or we'll be posting it in the Facebook group. But tell us about the first part of this film. Like um, what's what's kind of going on, Nick? Do you want to? Yes. Well, I. Do you just okay, want to we, show it? Well, I, yeah, that's that's my question. Should we just should we just show it and then she can talk about it afterwards? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do let's that. Let's just do that. Let's do that. All right. So here is the first what four or five minutes from the most recent Blink film. Oh, 
So in uh, February of 2019, I got the diagnosis that my mom had breast cancer. I started to see signs that this wasn't beatable. As a curious person, I've always had the most profound curiosity about everything, even faith and knowing that the word faith is believing in what you can't see and just having steadfast belief in something that is. Towards the end of my mom's life, we flew down to Florida and spent six days prior to her passing. And one of my big things is I asked my mom to show me that heaven was real. About an hour before she passed, I grabbed her hand and said, Mom, show me it's real. No better person than you. She squeezed my hand. I had accepted the fact that she was going there. As she passed away, I knew that in the coming weeks that something was going to happen. There was a very profound moment the day before my little sister's wedding. Blake and Macy chose to get baptized in the Gulf of Mexico. As we walked up on the beach, I was kind of struggling that morning. So I walked off on my own, got in the water about up to my knees and looked up and said, Mama, show me something cool. Show me that it's real, show me that you're here. Two seconds after I looked down, a dolphin jumps out of the water, does a full front flip, and about 15 or 20 dolphins start just playing right out in front of me. And I look over at my sisters and say, Mom's here. Dolphins proceeded to sit behind Macy and Blake as they got baptized for the entire time. It's, it's profound because the dolphin ties with my mom's life in so many ways. It brought a lot of peace to our family. She still showed her presence in that way. It is real and it is powerful. It's pretty hard to deny it's from a higher power. As we walked off the beach that morning, I looked back and there was the dolphins just leaving. My mom and Jesus were with us that morning. Okay, so wow, um, that part of the film, you know, like sets the scene for just 
an incredible, like you said, like a life film. So why don't you break down just kind of what you were thinking for for that first part of the film? Um, just kind of what went through your head? How'd you make this happen? All that kind of good stuff. Yeah, so the baptism ended up being such a big segment of their film, and that was not something that I anticipated at all. Um, about a week or so before uh, Macy and Blake's wedding day, she had told me that they were planning to get baptized in the ocean the day before their wedding. And I just, I knew that we wanted to film that, that Jill and I wanted to be there for that. Um, but, you know, I thought it was just going to be one of those things. Yeah, it's going to enhance the story, but always looking for those creative opportunities. And we show up that morning and there was just this, this presence and immediately walking into this family's grief. And she had her closest friends and family there that morning. And we got to witness one of the coolest things that we've ever experienced filming. And that was the whole dolphin story, which completely guided the direction of the rest of their film. Um, As a bit of a backstory, I mean, you guys know what her brother explained in the film. Um, But when Macy's mom passed the day that she died and they looked outside, there were dolphins in the ocean. So for Macy and her family, dolphins are just such a symbolic reminder of her mom's presence and her spirit and the fact that dolphins were directly out in front of them and nowhere else along the beach was just the coolest experience that was entirely unplanned nothing that any of us would have ever seen coming Um, and that i feel like really took precedence and just allowing viewers or people who aren't familiar with their story to really understand where this family's heart is um, before they go into celebrating one of the most important days of Macy and Blake's life. And that's why I put such a weight on that first five minutes and that really just guided the direction of the rest of the film. I I try from time to time to just like be quiet to see if Nick will take it, but he doesn't. We'll get the, we'll get this figured out sooner or later. I'll I'll pick it up from here, Nick. You hang on, Nick. You chill out over there. Okay, no. go um, yeah, you just he, he's like the guy on the Zoom call that like records himself and puts it in front of the camera and like it just loops. Um, no, but back on that note, like the first five minutes of that film, like um, it's. Like it does, it doesn't feel like five minutes. I mean, a lot of people's full films are five minutes. And I know that when we talked before, like in the moment, obviously you didn't have some of this stuff, like you didn't know, like, I I don't think you knew as much as like the dolphin story. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, So like, how did you go about, I don't know, like when, when that's happening in that moment, there's no way to be ready for that. So what was your mindset of like capturing this? Like, did you just drop all of your tripods or monopods and just move into, you know, capture stuff mode or like what was kind of going on behind the scenes for that? Yeah. I mean, at that point we had heard a passing comment about the dolphins and that's, there's a shot in there of Macy crying and she's hugging her friends and she says that was mama. And she had walked up to us in the midst of everything and briefly shared that story that I later recorded her brother sharing. Um, So we we knew what was going on, but at that point we were just focused on capturing the most raw, genuine emotions we possibly could and then stitching the story together afterwards. So that's where we were really focused on all of those micro moments and those tears. And at that point, you know that everyone present is important. So just trying to capture everyone's faces that we could and genuine reactions there. And then after we finished filming the entire wedding weekend, got back in Colorado, um, gave Macy and Blake a breather. I had contacted her and asked her if she would be interested in telling that story. If I could come meet with her and just sit down and talk and she could record that story for me. And she's like, you know, I absolutely love that idea, but this was my brother's story and I'd love for him to have that piece in our film. So I'll reach out to him and see if that's something he'd be interested in. And he was fully down for the opportunity, which was just such a blessing for me. And to take that extra time just to go sit and spend with them, I feel like his voiceover just, it it added so much and amplified the emotion of what you were already experiencing through the visuals. 
Yeah. I, like I, I sit there and I watch it. And then like, I mean, the rest of the film, which we've posted in the Facebook group, if you haven't seen it, you need to like, we'll link it in the show notes so people can watch it. But like that really did determine like the rest of the pacing for the film that determined a lot of things, you know, for how the film was going. Um, what is it like, you know, being in that situation? Cause I think I, what I really want filmmakers, videographers, whatever we want to call ourselves to remember is like our business is way more than like an Instagram reel or way more than just social media or clout or like the real reasoning. Like I remember this when my dad passed away last year, just like, the first thing I did is went back and found video that he was in so I could hear his voice so I could. And we don't want to just think about wedding films. as like, we're recording this cause dad's going to die one day or cause mom's going to like, but like we are capturing these real moments. And so you're at this, um, you know, the baptism of, of the day before the wedding or like before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's the day before. Okay. And so tell me a little bit about like, the experience of being just there for all of this and like how that maybe has changed you as a storyteller, filmmaker, um, like just the significance of what we do. Yeah. I really just breaking it down and being transparent. That was the perfect reminder that it is entirely about story and people. And that has always been something that's so important to me and guided who I am as a filmmaker in general. Um, but there's there's so many people, filmmakers out there who absolutely kill it on the production side. But I just, it was like, had I have been there just with a phone capturing that versus the cameras that we had, we switched everything to handheld and we're just so present in that moment. And I think the last thing that you care about is getting the perfect angle angle or directing the perfect composition. I remember when we first got there, Macy and Blake are standing in the ocean and she looks at me and she's like, do you want us to do anything? Like, do you want to direct us at all? And I was like, no, like I want, I fully want to take a backseat to this experience because this, this is so important for you to be present and just feel everything that you're feeling. And the last thing that I care about is curating like an Instagram worthy moment of you and Blake, like running on the beach or playing in the water. And while those things are great, I just, moments are supposed to hold value. And I think that especially capturing live events, that that's something that we should always, always prioritize over anything else. Um, So if anything, filming that wedding and all of the weight of the emotion that was involved, I realized that the more that I took a backseat fly on the wall approach, um, that's where all of those candid, true emotions came through and the ability to capture those shots. You know, the family went on about living and crying and hugging each other. And just when you take a step back just to watch what's going on and put your camera down, you're that much more intentional about what you're filming and why you're filming it. You know, I just, I, I always want to hold on to that as the foundation behind what I do, as opposed to just scripting perfect moments. Mm-hmm. One thing as we've, you know, talked uh, last week, a couple of weeks ago about this film, um, you know, you were, you know, you were talking about how, you know, you wanted to get, you know, their permission. I know you included like footage of, you know, uh, you know, their mom and stuff in the video and, you know, you're just like being upfront about what you wanted. And I think it's, it's, it's a really refreshing reminder. Yes. Um, given the situation, like it's, it's going to be a very emotional, you know, day. And, you know, we, you know, we talk about in filmmakers stuff, oh, it's, you know, it's great emotion, you know, great, great thing, you know, like, uh, but you, you were also, um, like intentional and purposeful with it. Like you, like you did not set out to make a film just so people would watch it and cry. Like you like that, that, that was not your intent. And I think so many of us, whenever we're filming weddings, Right. That seems to be the driving force in what we're creating. Right. Is like, I want to make this and I want the, the music to crescendo and I want this to happen so that it, you know, gets people really emotional and start crying and stuff. But you like, no, this this is real people. And I want to, um, you know, 
create this film that's celebrating the couple, but also celebrating their family and celebrating mom and like doing all of that together and being intentional with all of that um, as, and while I'm sure you're like, yeah, it's, 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 it's cool and it's overwhelming and I can't believe it that so many people, this film is resonating with them and that kind of stuff. But I know that you're, um, you're, you're taking more pride in the fact that this film really means something and really connected with your couple rather than, you know, being the most shared wedding video of the year on Instagram or, or whatever. And so I, I really appreciate that approach that I know that you have taken about, um, you know, being intentional and not trying to just do something to get you views, but really the heart and soul of it is, is telling this story from these couple and how you've tied it all together. So, mm-hmm. There's yeah. not really, I, I don't know if there's a response for you to say. I was just, you know, saying this is really good and, and cool of you. <laughs> and I appreciate you doing that. It's a really refreshing take for so many of us to um, know that, you know, what, what's the real reason we're doing this? We're, we're creating these films. Why are we doing this? And it's not, it shouldn't be so that other people like, oh, you know, Catherine is so cool or John's so cool or, or whatever. It's, you know, we're creating an heirloom piece for um, the couples that we serve. So that was yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, even just to build off of that, it's like exactly to your point, um, highlighting these people for who they are so that their film is a reflection of them wholeheartedly. I think the biggest compliment that you can receive after they watch it is, oh my gosh, that felt so much like us. That's us in our story and our love. And that the way that Macy and her family grieved isn't how everyone grieves. And the emotion that they were so forthcoming with inviting us into, not everyone's going to feel that way. So it's not it's not just a one-stop approach where you can apply this and this and this to every couple or maybe similar stories. You know, not everyone's going to be so willing to hand over such intimate footage, intimate mm-hmm. home videos, intimate moments. Um, so making sure that you're just having those conversations that are open and genuine and guiding the couple into their natural comfort zone you know not not everyone's that way and macy loves to share her life and be open in that way so that's something that i built off of um, to highlight who her and blake are when there are no cameras on them you know yeah um as John, I'm going to keep going. I, ha- I have things that I want to say. So, yeah. Um, yeah, whenever whenever you came and spoke with our mastermind group about this, you know, a couple of weeks ago, one of the um, one of our students, Kathleen is her name, she said, yeah, I had a very similar situation where uh, a parent had passed away very recently and they were like, don't make it about like, we don't even want you to touch on, you know, parent passing and that kind of stuff. And so it's, you know, just kind of a testament to the importance of getting getting to know your couples and what, you know, resonates with them and, and what they want to, to share. I, um, I, I shared a first, first look groom reaction on TikTok or whatever. And it got, I don't know, like almost a million views, you know, a hundred thousand views, you know, something like that. And, um, the, the bride, like she loved it, but the groom, he's an eight on the Enneagram and eights really don't like getting emotional and showing emotion and like that kind of stuff. And so he was, he was kind of, in, I mean, he was like, this is cool, but almost kind of embarrassed. And, you know, I didn't do my my due diligence of like, why am I doing this? Why am I sharing this? That kind of stuff. So anyway, um, again, the importance of getting to know your couples and what's going to be right for them. Like, that's so huge. Okay, John, you can talk. Mm-hmm. Or Catherine can talk. I mean, she's the, the one that made this incredible film. <laughs> now, the thing I was going to ask on the heels of that, and I think a lot of people... Like I'm the nostalgia guy. Like I have so many home videos. Like we have boxes of VHS tapes and like I love digitizing things. Little side plug, my daughter's starting a digitizing business. She's 10. No big deal. If you guys want me to digitize your footage, just hit me up. But anyway, uh, like we love going through that stuff. And like we always had a VHS camera when I was a kid. We always... um, I've, I think I've seen that you've put some of that footage into previous films, but like the intention that you used with this film, like I don't think it was um, just hopping on a trend of whatever. I think it was like watching your films, they feel so very intentional. Maybe you can talk a little bit about like the intention behind how you went about doing the edit. Like how did this unfold? Did you see this, you know, using her footage before you shot the wedding? 
all that kind of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I mean, intention is a word that I come back to constantly, and I think it's a huge part of my brand. It's a huge part of my work. But this film specifically challenged that more than I've ever been challenged. And with the weight of what I was working with and the amount of elements that I was working with, with the baptism, with an incredible wedding, with amazing vows, letters, amazing speeches, her parents' wedding film, home videos. It's like there's so much to think about and such a, like a, a large amount of footage and wonderful audio to use that it's like you have to figure out a way to stitch it together where you're not going to lose the impact or so that no part overshadows another. And I probably just sat on the thought of figuring out how I'm even going to craft this for the longest time. And then once I got the baptism segment solid, I knew, like I had this idea that sparked with her parents' wedding because what, as I was watching that, there were so many moments in her parents' wedding that were a direct reflection of Macy and Blake's wedding that it was pulling these ideas where I could mirror that of like this present day. So even in the beginning when it's like, you see um, the wedding of Sharon and Kevin Dunnigan and their wedding date. It's like, I, I want to start that from the very beginning so that you know you're getting into something unique here and you know that her parents' wedding film is going to tie all the way throughout. But even like with the B-roll shots of the decor, you know, when you're when you're talking about losing her mom, you can't just throw in a beautiful shot of the tent without it meaning anything. You're, no, you're gonna mm -hmm. pull viewers out of that emotion. So really thinking about, like I, Nick, you said this the other day, I think it was in the mastermind group, but having your visuals represent your audio um, is always like, it's such a basic good reminder to guide your film. And I think is a basic good reminder for the idea of what intention means, because when you actually show what your audio is saying and guide viewers through that or even go a step further to try and find symbolism in the audio like that that is why this film was so hard to edit because i never wanted to take you out of that feeling mm -hmm. and stitching each and every moment together in a way where it made sense um, and even where you're circling back to earlier ideas you know when she's walking down the aisle and then you see the shot of her mom walking down the aisle and then it's like that moment felt so heavy that I knew I wanted to create something more, which is where that whole like dolphin sequence that I used of the stock footage came through to remind you, like go back to the dolphins when her dad brings mm -hmm. that up. There's, there were so many unique ties um, that I wanted to like circle back to in every single aspect of the film all the way through until the completion. Um, and even finding like that song that mimicked what her sister said at the end of her speech. Like, I'm just, I'm so proud of all of those little moments because when you take the time to intentionally stick, like stitch things together, it makes such a difference in the overall impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And after, and you know, watching through this film a couple of times, you know, I, it, you can definitely see that, you know, just, just how it, how it is like pieced together and put together very intentional. So, um, yeah, you, you've, you've done a great, great work with this and we are, we want to continue to talk to you about maybe your experience with, um, you know, how you've been dealing with it, you know, after you let it out into the wild and how people have been commenting and just kind of your thoughts on that. So we will be right back after this break with Catherine from Blink Films. Hi, it's Michael from Weditor. We want to thank everyone for the incredible support we've received since sponsoring How to Film Weddings. Yes, we've had some growing pains, but we've had far more wins. And we're doing something that's never been done. We're a remote team of over 50 editors in 10 countries. I often joke that we're as much a logistics company as we are a creative company. Right now, demand is off the charts. And we don't just say yes to everyone and scramble to figure it out. That's why we're asking you to help us help more of you. In short, we're looking for more talented wet editors, part-time or full-time, work from where you want, when you want, as long as you hit deadlines and deliver quality. It's a chance to get paid while growing as an editor. Our project managers work with you, explaining why something feels right or doesn't, 
because there's always a reason. If you're interested, we'd love to hear from you. Go to weditor.com slash editor and fill out our form. Finding the perfect song for your wedding film can be so frustrating. We spend countless hours searching for the perfect song. When it comes to licensing music, Nick and I both love Musicbed. Not only do they have the best music, but their website makes it so easy to find the perfect song and to find it fast. We have both been using the Musicbed's wedding subscription for years and cannot recommend it enough. Not only are they adding new music from incredible musicians like Chapters, The Light, The Heat, and Tony Anderson all the time, they've made it incredibly easy to search their library for mood, genre, instrumentation, and even key. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed and use promo code HTFW for a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription. howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. All right, we are back from break, and we're going to go ahead and jump into our Wetter question of the day. Wetter more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And uh, Catherine, um, before we kind of hopped on, you know, you were kind of sharing about the the highs and the lows of you know releasing you know something like this that you have just worked so so hard on and you know you're so excited about but then kind of a um, I don't know kind of a creative depression or you know kind of something sort of like that 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 might be too strong I don't know but you know so, so why don't you I don't know if it's really a question or just kind of your thoughts but you know share the emotional roller coaster I guess that you've been going on um, that I think a lot of people can really really relate to you know you release something that you're so excited about and then after a while you're like well now what kind of thing so why don't you just kind of talk through what the last uh, couple of weeks has been like for you oh yeah and I like I love that this is where the conversation is going because it's it's such an important thing to think about um, I think especially after you release this film that's like you know, you're, you're presenting this present that's perfectly wrapped, but so many people don't see the behind the scenes of that at all. And I like that's I've been going through this major emotional roller coaster since because, you know, I had I had sent it off to Macy and then she and her family wanted to take their time and sit on it. So, you know, that that initial excitement when you deliver a film um, by the time that I shared it publicly, that had subsided. Um, so it was like finding that excitement again when you're sharing it with the public. And I have seen this film hundreds and hundreds of times. So then the public is just now reacting for the first time. And we can all get in our heads when these people are feeding like, gosh, I, I feel so overwhelmed with gratitude with the response that that film had. But it's so hard to not go through like this internal battle of being like, oh, my gosh, this this is my most proud film to date. This is probably the strongest film in my portfolio. But to be frank, that edit nearly killed me. Like I I think for multiple weeks straight, I was pulling 12 to 14 hour days because when you're just in this rhythm, you wanna keep going on that rhythm. And then just the pressure and the weight of that story of making sure that you do like her mom's legacy justice. And then, um, I think just like giving so much of myself into my work and into my couples and my clients in every aspect and even giving so much of myself into making sure I respond to like every comment and DM and thing that people have said, I, I find myself even right now talking like it's it's been a week and I've had some emotional moments where I've just had to take a step back and protect my mental health of just letting myself feel this creative roller coaster because like you said in the beginning like a creative depression is very real and it's hard as i'm sure many of us who are listening to this right now are probably have a big backlog and are probably stressed about deadlines i'm right there with you but it's it's hard as we're having these back-to-back -back deadlines to really like find that creative place to pull from and be so willing to just open up a brand new project file and start a new edit you know like that's just it's it's hard it's so hard and i i don't i still haven't figured out how to fully go through like the creative recovery process in a way where you're like ready to completely start a brand new project you know 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the things too, with just going, you know, being so intentional with the film, like being okay with just knowing that, yeah, that's going to take a lot out of you as a human to pour that much into something. And then obviously with the response and people, you know, probably blowing you up, uh, you know, just with all the messages and kind words and all that. And as a, as a three, as a human that enjoys being praised, you know, like uh, a lot of us do, but like, um, you know, you get all that and it's like, that's all great. And then it kind of subsides and you're just like, well, man, I don't like starting another one. That sounds exhausting, but I have this backlog. And then you start to feel burned out. Then you start to, um, and as we, we actually talked on our mastermind last night with our, our students, our members there, um, like we brought Eric Floberg on for just a second. He said something that really stood out to me whenever he's dealing with like this creative rut and he's talking about like community is really everything around this, like being around community to be able to be vulnerable and to say, I'm going through this, I'm doing this. And he said something though. He said, we spend a fraction of our lives with these people and the, uh, that we're serving and we, we push away the community that we spend the majority of our life with to like serve this fraction of people. And I was just like, gosh, darn!" like that really hit me. Like, yes, these people are very important and these films are very important, but maybe the, the whole community side of things, are you finding yourself like leaning on your community, the people that you're around? Does that help you? What do you have to say on, on any of that? Oh yeah. I mean, even like just people who you see up come like, come in your inbox often on Instagram or anytime I've like posted something on my stories and you have such a response of people being like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling that same way. You know, I, it's, it's hard, I think, for wedding filmmakers, especially because we're, we're all connected socially, but rarely are we ever together in person. And it's, it's this community that we know we have that sometimes we forget about because more often than not, we're battling alone and we're battling a, a lot of these emotions alone that I think these conversations are so important um, to just kind of lift the veil and be like, hey, <laughs> like, despite whether you're making work that you're proud of or not, we're all going through something or some form of exhaustion, especially with the type of year that we've all had and weddings picking back up. Um, But even just being in the office environment that I'm around now, where I do have Jill in office with me, my second shooter, and we do have um, an in-house editor that she's hired, Bailey, who's in here with us too. And yesterday I was just, I was feeling all these emotions and Jill just looks at me and she's like, are you okay? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for someone to just ask you if you're okay, I like tears just started rolling down my face and I don't think I had let myself express that I was exhausted and coming off of a high of like a film that you love so much, it's natural to carry this creative pressure moving forward before we give ourselves the time to kind of like regroup, I would say. Um, so it's like, it doesn't matter who you are or the type of work that you're producing. I just think when we all just look at ourselves on a human level, we're experiencing all of the exact same emotions, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I, I think that one of the greatest lies that any of us can believe is that we're in it alone. Um, what, whatever, you know, our stage in life and, you know, you're, you're sitting here listening to, um, a really incredible filmmaker, uh, and Catherine's like, Hey, I have a massive backlog too. Um, I put, poured my heart and soul into this film and now I'm feeling, you know, I've gotten so many compliments and it's great, but now I'm feeling down about, you know, where to go next and what to do. And there are so many of us that have these exact same feelings, but we, we look at, you know, Catherine's highlight and think, Oh man, she has it all together. She doesn't, she doesn't have any of these feelings. You know, she doesn't have a bad, you know, she's great. You know, that because we're comparing, you know, John and I have talked about, we're comparing, um, our behind the scenes to someone else's highlight and how we can't do that. So, um, you know, one, uh, 
you know, something that John has been posting in like our mastermind group and our complete wedding video group. And I posted something about that kind of today is, you know, like how, how are you doing? How are you holding up? And we want honest answers only, you know, and the thing that we are seeing over and over again is people like I'm stressed out. I'm backlogged. I'm freaking out. Like I don't know what to do. And while it doesn't change your situation that you still have 10 plus weddings to edit, but knowing that there are hundreds of other people in your exact same situation kind of can, you know, give you a little bit of hope, you know, in that, that dark situation. So, um, anyway, just, just some encouragement to those listening out there that you are not alone. Um, and, uh, you know, if you just are kind of fed up at the moment and, you know, feeling stressed out and burned out, you know, we do have, you know, at least in our community, our Facebook group, you know, just put something in there and, and, um, other people will be able to, you know, sympathize with you and empathize with you because they're in the same spot. So, um, what, what would you say? Okay, so now you've re- released this film. Okay, what ha, what has it done for you? You know, kind of, or are you just kind of still sitting in it and you're still kind of figuring that? Like, where? And, and you've kind of talked about that roller coaster a little bit too. But has it really um, changed a perspective or anything from you since you know releasing this film? You know, it's it's funny because I would love to say like. This is a film that happened to get a great response. Um, but the the heart that went into this film, although it it required a lot of energy, it wasn't it wasn't any different or any more than any other film that I've done. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I give all of myself in every creative possibility that I can to every edit that I do. And this happened to be a story that resonated with so many. So I think part of that is the like my personal reaction too is like it's it's almost this sense of like overwhelm by such a positive reaction because it's like I I feel like I've been doing this for years. I everything that I've put in I've been doing this for years so it's like it makes sense why this story caught the attention of so many and I I love that. But at the same time, it it's it's only instilled um, the purpose of what I do even deeper, you know. And it's I've struggled too. Like part of um, the emotions that I've been experiencing is in since the day that I released that film, I've received 17 inquiries, and have probably heard back from I would say like three of those, <laughs> and. That is very hard too because it you you go into this tailspin of just being like, man, like what the heck? You know, you dump your heart and soul into something, and then people are on this high and are excited to inquire. But then again, it's like they see the prices and they're just like, oh, never mind, <laughs> you know. So I think going it, it's just this whole emotional tailspin. And again, I always aim for transparency, so that's why I'm sharing this. But that's just. A, that's how I've been handling this is it hasn't changed my approach. It's only instilled what I love and instilled the purpose behind what we do and um, just keeps me wanting to push forward to connecting with with my people and connecting Mm. with the right people who are so willing to have these stories told Um, because that's, that's where my heart comes alive. And I know that's not going to resonate with everybody, but it's just... I don't know. It's it's hard not to feel a whole pot of emotions of excitement and defeat and feeling proud of this piece. But I don't know. I I still can't really find the words to articulate mm-hmm. everything that I'm feeling. Yeah. Well, I I really appreciate you. You know, wanting to be transparent and wanting to be upfront with this because it it would be really easy for you to come on here and be like, yeah, did you watch that? I'm awesome. And just kind of like, you know, like everything's great and everything's grand. I mean, and we would not fault you if, if that was your attitude, you know, based on the quality of this work. Um, so thank you for, you know, wanting to open up and talk about uh, some of the darker side of um, being a creative and putting stuff out there and, and all that stuff. So uh, I know a lot of our listeners um, to some some scale or another 
what you're saying is really resonating with them. And so um, as we're getting ready to wrap up here, do you have any kind of parting words or parting advice uh, to anyone that might be in a similar boat or a similar situation to the one you're in? Yeah, um, absolutely. And I will just, I'll, again, I'll speak from the heart here because it's something that I'm currently having to tell myself um, is if you are out there and you do have an overwhelming backlog, um, I myself have back-to-back -back deadlines until March. And I am having to remind myself um, each and every edit that I sit down for, really forget about the last film, don't think about the future film, and take your time on this film. And if it's gonna take longer than you think, communicate with your couple, they're gonna want your best work. So just, you're starting from a blank slate and use that to your advantage. And even in the past few days, of, as I've started on a new edit um, that I'll be releasing in probably two weeks or so, um, I'm just, I'm erasing what the past two weeks have been and I'm thankful for that, but I'm immersing myself in this couple and their story and their words because this isn't just a shoot that we can redo. This isn't a styled shoot that you're, aiming to do the most epic cool stuff. This is literally someone's wedding day. And that alone should be a reminder of the importance of what we do. Um, you know, these, these people trusted you to document one of the most important days of their life. And if you can get beside yourself, take it one day at a time and just focus on what that means, <clears throat> you will be just fine. I promise you'll wake up better tomorrow. I'm telling myself that right now, and I, I feel better today than I did yesterday, and we're just going to take it one day at a time, so hang it. in there. <laughs> I love it. I love getting to spend time with you and, you know, uh, just hear your heart. You put it on your sleeve, and, like, just watching you, like, I feel better about, you know, it's like, okay, like, we are all in this together. We all, you know, like, being a creative person human being and like the highs and lows of it. Like I'm really happy you open up about that. Um, we had you on the podcast not too long ago, but if people want to find you at blink films, B L N K blink films everywhere across all social platforms, mm -hmm. we'll be tagging you of course. And then in the show notes, there'll be links to your website. Is there anything that you're working on or want us to make sure that, um, the wedding, the how to film weddings community knows about, or to stay in touch with you, any place that we, we would want to send them besides, um, your Instagram page, your website. I mean, those are the two top places to find me. I've had, um, quite a few mentorship inquiry sessions. Um, my one-on-one -on -one mentorships are currently on hold. Um, going back to the entire conversation we just had, I'm yeah. focusing on my edits. So in the meantime, I've just been directing people to sign up for my email list. You can sign up for that on the footer of my website. And um, with plans to release education in the future, that would be the first place that you'd receive those announcements. But yeah. for now, find me on Instagram. There's my website, trying to get back in the YouTube space. So everything at Blink Films. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for taking the time. I yeah, know that you. you're very busy and we don't take it lightly whenever you give your time. So the, the How to Film Weddings community, thanks you for being on, is patting you on the back and saying thanks for your time. And we're all better from this conversation. So thanks for being on today. Thank you guys so much for giving me the space to open up and talk about it. It's always a pleasure sitting down with you too. All right. So that was our interview with Catherine from Blink Films. I love getting to chat with her. Just her uh, intention is so important. And we do have incredible jobs as wedding filmmakers, but we don't want to just be a podcast that's only thinking uh, and only communicating that like life is always easy and good. And like as creatives, there are ups and downs and it's okay to feel those. Make sure mm -hmm. you have a community. If you're not part of one, be sure to check out our Facebook group, uh, howtofilmweddings.com slash community. We'll get you there. Um, but find some people, put them in your corner. Nick, anything you want to add before we sign off today? I, I kind of hog to this ending here. Hey, I, you know, I did like all of the endings for like a year. So I, yeah. I'm totally okay with you hogging it. Yeah, that was the only thing I was going to say is, you know, check out our Facebook group and uh, get involved. Um, you know, talk to some people, you know, let, let people know how you're doing and then they'll let yeah. you know how they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a great episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you don't subscribe to us on YouTube, check us out there because the video portion at the beginning of this episode, you'll want to see that. So have a great week. And until next time, we'll see you. See ya. 
Are you looking for a better way to deliver your wedding films to your couples? Look no further. Our friends over at Wedflow provide the most flexible video delivery solution on the market. Wedflow is pay per project with no large upfront cost or commitment, and you can cancel any time. Not only that, Wedflow offers a premium viewing experience for your couples. Accessible on mobile, tablet, desktop, as well as their very own suite of TV apps. Each project comes with 10 years hosting and an experience for your clients that will blow them away. Stop delivering your films the old fashioned way and give your couples something to rave about. Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wedflow to check out Wedflow today.